So about a week ago on the community section of my page, I decided to show some photos of my current diorama, or as I call it, my film set. The idea behind it was I just wanted something that was far better than everyone else had at their disposal because I found most Gumpla reviews circled around boring film backdrops. You know, like you're taking a photo of somebody's shoes or something. Anyway, in that community section, I showed off what I was doing and people started wondering how I went about doing it, which was odd because I figured this is pretty straightforward, easy to do stuff. Messing around with LEDs, especially today. I buy all my LEDs from Evan Designs, I believe. I found that when I was looking for small HO scale LEDs, HO scale in the train community is 187 scale, whereas Tegumpla is 100 scale. The funny thing is, they're so close to each other, you can barely distinguish the two apart, frankly. So a lot of my stuff is learned from the diorama and train building community. So I went there, picked up stuff, and bit of bing, bada boom. Ironically, that's also how I found uh, Otaku Builder. I think the first comment I left on one of his videos was, I ironically shop the same place to get my LEDs. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm using these little wires here, the 30 foot black and red wire intertwined together because it saves space. Don't even bother with them separated unless you have no choice. I bought the separate ones because they were out of the black ones at the time. I have a lot of LEDs just floating around my place. The beauty with these LEDs today is the simplicity of them. It's mind blowing. Back in the day when you were messing around with LEDs, well I was, you literally had to have resistors on every fucking LED. And if you didn't, it wouldn't work. And if you had the wrong resistor, it would blow up or burn out. Playing with the dog real quick here. Everybody loves Fluffy. So wiring Darth Vader chess parts was such a pain in the ass back in the day. Now, man, with the way LEDs are, dude, it's crazy. You just hook them up to a power source, you're done. No need to regulate. No need to make sure you're the right resistor, nothing. You twist two wires together and you are pretty much done. It's crazy how easy things have gotten. But if you wanna do special sequences, you still gotta get like a little bored. But it's not as hard as it used to be, I can tell you that. And we're just twisting these little suckers up. No big whoopee, you know what I'm saying? Now you're gonna see these, uh, what the hell are these things called? Uh, shrink tubing, heat shrink tubing. You're gonna need these because for some reason, Evan's design says don't use, don't solder the wires together, which for me is odd because I'm used to soldering wires together, but whatever, less work in the long run. Hey, just get these little heat shrink tubing. If you ever worked on a motorcycle or a car, you've worked with these before. Uh, the rule of thumb would be in most cases, people use lighters. The best way to go about it would probably be to use a soldering iron. I know, ironically, just for this one thing. And make it easier. I'm using a mini blowtorch. You don't have to. I just like to do it. Now the problem with the mini blowtorch is even on its lowest setting, it shoots out fire like uh, nobody's business. And if you get too close, you'll set the, the black shrink tubing on fire. The black shrink tubing will then burn out and turn into dust. It's really not what you want to do because it's counterproductive. It'll just break away into nothingness and make a mess. So be careful of that. That's the one thing I could suggest to you. Now, the size LEDs I'm using are three millimeters. They fit best for the mechanical bay thingy for the holes in the walls. If you want to do them in the floor, you're going to need micro or nano chips. Micro, actually. Stick with micro. Nano's too small. It'd be a real pain in the ass to deal with. Another way to do this would be to take fiber optic wire and hook it all up. It'll look much better, but it'll be so much more work in all honesty. But if you did it correctly, it'd probably be a very clean way to go about it. Uh, what else is there? These come in a couple different volts. I stick to 12 volt personally, so that way you can just hook it up to a 12 volt battery or a power source. You know, like a plug in the wall, whatever. That's the way I prefer to go about it. Whatever floats your boat. You know, lower voltage means you could probably get away with smaller batteries and have something more compact if you're putting it inside of a model kit or something like that. And now we're just looking at a whole bunch of uh, extra LEDs I just have sitting around in the bag and the fiber optic wires talking about. I had an idea to do some fiber optic stuff through Sasabi's fin funnels. I just never found the time to get around to doing it. 
And that should be that, frankly. That's all you really need to know. It's very straightforward. It's not hard. It's very easy to do. All you need is time, patience, and the money for it. Frankly, uh, the biggest hurdle to jump will probably be the price of the LEDs. I think just to get 24 plus a power brick, you know, that, not a power brick, you know, plus a plug hookup, ran me something like $70. And this thing takes more than 24 LEDs to light just for the walls. And that's not counting flashing lights or anything outside the ordinary to add a little extra flare. You know, it adds up when you get a lot of these LEDs. They seem cheap at first, which they are. But once you get a whole ton to hook stuff up, that's when you start to hemorrhage money. And at this point, now you can just look at what it, it looks like hooked up. It's nothing too special because I didn't put a ceiling on my diorama simply because I knew once I start doing perfect grades, I might have to expand the height another level, if not two. Let's hope to God one level would be enough because buying these and then painting them, it's very expensive in the long run. You know, when you stop and actually do tallying up, but you're not here for that. You're here to look at the LED stuff. Overall, nothing too crazy. I was going to light the floor, and maybe I will one day, but I'm not quite sure how I want to go about it. Just light it up. Do I want to glue the floor completely together and have it as one solid piece and then add micro LEDs at the bottom? But then maybe too many floors lighting up might be too much, so I should probably just designate it to one area and another area where, like, the, you know how it works, the Gundam catapult system or I should say mobile suit catapult system but you know that's all for future stuff because frankly this is third party and it's a real pain in the ass to work with so it would require a lot of modifications and as I stated before I work on like four channels not counting real life so doing gun plus stuff it's time it, you know it's all about time and if you don't have time you can't put out things you know and since you all know I build kits as much as I do and I put as much effort as in, into them as I do it's also time consuming I think the only other person in the English speaking Gunpla community that paints almost as much as me is a taco builder hell he might paint more than I think about it and here it is uh my base I know people have wanted to see the hangar base for a while now the overall aesthetic thought process here was a functional base I wanted to add some trucks. I might have to get another forklift. You don't even want to know how much those forklifts cost, man. Like, it is criminal for the price. Those things like $8 to $20. It's ridiculous. And I know people sit there and go, you should buy a 3D printer. Like, listen, you don't even want to know what it costs me just to film this stuff for you guys, all right? You have no idea how much I've already put in this channel. But anyway... I wanted the base to look realistic if I could make it happen. I have noticed other people did do mechanical bases in the past, but they sort of phoned it in. You know, they'd buy the base parts, maybe do like one square circle area, and that was it. Hell, they don't even dust their thing off. It's like got dust in the background and whatnot. Nobody bothered to sit there and paint these things to the fullest to try and give a more metallic color feel like this is a working area where something is happening. But the game plan is to do things that no one else is willing to do. And hopefully, you know, if YouTube's FTC crap is not going to destroy us all, like I think it won't, then my next diorama will push things to another level. People will not know what hit them. Neither will my wallet.